In this lesson, we'll try to focus on what we call les adverbes de manière, and especially the way to construct them. Okay? So the rule goes like, if you've got, or if you want to construct uh, an adverb de manière, first you've got to know well the adjective at the masculine form, then you will make it or modify it and put it at the feminine form, and after that you will add m e n t, and when you add this m e n t at the end of your feminine form of the adjective, then you will get the adverb. Okay, so it sounds quite easy. It is not that difficult. Okay, but then we'll have a look. So we'll take a first example, easy one, and this is parfait. Okay, parfait means perfect in English. Okay, it's not that far. So we've got here this adjective, and it's at the masculine form. If we put the same adjective at the feminine form, well, the rule normally we, we saw that previously goes like you put this final. Uh, you add this final uh at the end of your adjective to get the feminine form. Of course, we've got some exceptions, but then that's the normal rule, okay? And so, based on this form, as we saw, you just add m e n t, and then you get your adverb parfaitement, okay? In English, it would be perfectly, okay? So, parfait, then parfait, parfaitement. All right, so we'll see a few examples, and then the first one is franc. Okay, so in some cases they will be a bit strange because the feminine will not follow the rule that we saw, but then, I mean, I, I told you that in advance, you know, most of them uh, follow this rule, but then, of course, we've got exceptions. Okay, but then, so franc, franche, so it's the feminine form, the adjective, and then franchement, you get the adverb here. Okay, so for each adjective, I will put the English translation here at the beginning. All right. Dou, you don't pronounce the final X. Douce, feminine form. Doucement, adverb. Parfait, parfaite, parfaitement. Certain, certaine, certainement. Joyeux, joyeuse, joyeusement. All right, so let's repeat them one more time. Franc, franche, franchement. Doux, douce, doucement. Parfait, parfaite, parfaitement. Certain, certaine, certainement. Joyeux, joyeuse, joyeusement. Okay, let's continue the list. Heureux. Heureuse, heureusement. Spécial, spécial, spécialement. Clair, clair, clairement. Vif, vive, vivement. Sportif, sportive, sportivement. Ok, we can read them one more time. Heureux. Heureuse, heureusement. Spécial, spécial, spécialement. Clair, clair, clairement. Vif, vive, vivement. Sportif, sportive, sportivement. Ok? And then we can see some subgroups. Ok? So it does mean that here you will have the ending of your adjective at the masculine form, then here the ending of the adjective at the feminine form, and here you've got the ending of your adverb. So it takes back this ending here, a accent grave RE, and then you add this MENT. Okay, so this subgroup follow the rule that if it ends with ER, then the feminine form will be a accent grave, it goes like that. R -E. Okay, so let's see a few examples now. Entier, entière, entièrement. Premier, première, premièrement. Dernier, dernière, dernièrement. Léger, légère, légèrement. Okay, one more time. Entier, entière, entièrement. Premier, 
première, premièrement, dernier, dernière, dernièrement, léger, légère, légèrement. OK And then, uh, second, uh, second, sorry, subgroup. Uh, so if it ends with ET, then it will go like E accent grave, TE, and then for the adverb, E accent grave, TE, and you add this MENT here. OK Let's see. Secret, secrète, secrètement. Because okay, so I tend to insist a little bit on it just to make you hear the difference between the masculine. Secret, secrète. Okay, so you're pronouncing the T. Okay? Complet, complète, complètement. Discret, discrète, discrètement. Okay, so one more time. Secret, secrète, secrètement. Complet, complète, complètement. Discret, discrète, discrètement. Okay, so let's see another subgroup. So actually you get two things here. The first one, so if your adjective is ending with e n t, then it will be transformed for the adverb, like e m m e n t. And if it ends with a n t, it will be transformed like a m m e n t. Okay, but then I did put them in the same group because phonetically, and that's the important thing, phonetically you will pronounce them the same way. So you will pronounce amant, and here it will be the same. You will pronounce amant. Okay, so let's see how it goes. Patient, and then. Patiemment. So as I told you, even if you write it e m m e n t, phonetically it goes like amant, patiemment. All right. Récent. Same rule. Récemment. 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 Okay. Then suffisant. Suffisamment. And the last example. Élégant. Élégamment. All right, so let's repeat them one more time. Patient, patiemment, récent, récemment, suffisant, suffisamment, élégant, élégamment. Okay, and another subgroup. So if your adjective is ending with EL, then feminine form of the adjective will be E, double L, E, and then the adverb E, double L, E, M, E, N, T. Okay. Réel, réellement. Okay, so remember when you get this E uh, here and then it's followed by two consonants and then they are the same consonant like here. Uh, the sound of the E uh, changes and it's open. It's E. Eh. So that's the reason why you get this réel. Okay, réellement. All right. Then manuel, manuel, manuellement. Annuel, annuel, annuellement. Naturel, naturel, naturellement. Ok, one more time. Réel, réel, réellement. Manuel, manuel, manuellement. Annuel, annuel, annuellement. Naturel, naturel, naturellement. Uh, the topic will be dans la ville, so in the town, dans la ville. Okay, so let's start now. Une rue. Okay, remember final E uh, not pronounced. Une rue. Une voie ferrée. Final E uh, here not pronounced and then this one is not pronounced either. Une voie ferrée. Une autoroute. Une autoroute. Un boulevard, final D, not pronounced. Un boulevard. Un lampadaire, final E, not pronounced. Un lampadaire. Une aire de stationnement. Une aire de stationnement. Un musée, final E, not pronounced. Un musée. Un immeuble. So you can see I'm making this little liaison between the two. Un immeuble. Final E not pronounced. Un immeuble. 
un stade. Same thing here, final E uh, is not pronounced. Un stade. Un gratte-ciel. Un gratte-ciel. Un restaurant. Final T, not pronounced. Un restaurant. Un hôtel. So you can see that I'm making this little liaison, this little link between the two. Un hôtel. Un no, un no, un hôtel. All right. Un terre-plein. Un terre-plein. Remember this E-I-N nasal. So it goes in your nose and it's un plein, plein, un terre-plein. Une gare. Okay, remember when you get this G and R together, the sound is g g g g Une gare, final E not pronounced. Une gare. Une tour. Okay, O U U U. Une tour. Un palais des congrès. Final S here and here are not pronounced. Un palais des congrès. Un parc. Un parc. Un espace vert. First thing, you've got this little link between the two. Un espace vert. Final E not pronounced and then final T not pronounced. Un espace vert. Un trottoir. Un trottoir. Une borne d'incendie. Okay, final E here not pronounced. Final E here not pronounced. Une borne d'incendie. And then you get the nasal. Un en incendie. Une borne d'incendie. Un égout. Okay, little link between the two. Un égout. Final T not pronounced. Un égout. Une conduite d'eau potable. Une conduite d'eau potable. Final E uh, here and here are not pronounced. And then when you combine these two, or oh, so, sorry, these three vowels E, uh, A, U, you get the sound O. Only O. Okay? Une conduite d'eau potable. Okay? Une conduite de gaz. Final E uh, not pronounced here. Une conduite de gaz. Un câble électrique. Final E uh, here and here are not pronounced. Un câble électrique. Un abribus. Un abribus. Un arrêt d'autobus. So you can hear this little link between the two. Un arrêt d'autobus. Un passage pour piéton. Un passage pour piéton. Final S here, not pronounced, and then final E, not pronounced. Un passage pour piéton. Des feux de circulation. So here, final X, not pronounced. Des feux de circulation. Une chaussée. Okay, here, final E uh, not pronounced. And then you get the double S between two vowels, so it's really strong. I mean, the S is s, -s, -s. Okay, so une chaussée. Un réverbère. Final E uh, not pronounced. Un ré. So here you've got this accent aigu, E. And then here you've got this accent grave, E. Okay, E, E. So it goes like réverbère. Ok Un réverbère. Une maison individuelle. So remember, when you get this E uh, and then double consonant, and especially here, it's the same one. Uh, that's the, the idea. It will open the sound of E, uh, so you will pronounce it like E. Eh. Ok Individuel. Uel. Ok Une maison Individuel. Une maison individuelle jumelée. 
final e uh here not pronounced une maison individuelle jumelée des appartements en copropriété remember final s and final t are not pronounced here des appartements little liaison here des appartements en copropriété des maisons en rangée final e and final s are not pronounced des maisons en rangée une tour d'habitation remember h h doesn't exist in french wealth in most of the cases so it does mean that you don't pronounce it all right so d'habitation une tour d'habitation dans la maison so let's start now une entrée principale un vestibule un vestiaire un couloir un escalier une buanderie ok so one more time une entrée principale un vestibule un vestiaire un couloir un escalier une buanderie un salon une cheminée une salle à manger une cuisine des WC une salle de séjour So one more time. Un salon, une cheminée, une salle à manger, une cuisine, des WC, une salle de séjour. Un rez-de-chaussée, un étage, un palier, une chambre principale. Une garde-robe, une chambre, one more time. un rez-de-chaussée, un étage, un palier, une chambre principale, une garde-robe, une chambre, une fenêtre. Une porte-fenêtre, une salle de bain, une douche, une baignoire, une porte pliante. So one more time. Une fenêtre, une porte-fenêtre, une salle de bain, une douche. Une baignoire, une porte pliante, une table, une desserte, un fauteuil, un canapé, un banc, un tabouret. One more time. Une table, une desserte, un fauteuil, un canapé, un banc, un tabouret. Une chaise. Un lit. Une armoire. Un coffre. Une commode, un rideau, okay. une chaise, un lit, une armoire, un coffre, une commode, un rideau.
we'll have the pleasure to discover together two verbs. So it's quite interesting because we've got first the verb savoir and then we've got the verb connaître. And if you want to translate that, I mean, directly in English, well, basically they mean the same thing and it would be translated with to know. Okay, so two verbs for the same meaning. What does it mean? It means that you will have two different uses of these verbs. The first one, savoir, well, the rule is that you will use savoir plus a verb. So after that, if you want to add a verb, then you will have to use savoir. Or then if you want to put, as we say, structure verbale, so it's just somehow like a sentence, okay? So if you want to introduce a sentence after savoir, then uh, after to know, then that's savoir that you will have to use, okay? But connaître, so same meaning, as I said, it's to know, okay? You will use connaître only if you want to put a name or a noun after connaître, okay? So that's the main difference of use between savoir and connaître. Okay, so connaître plus a noun avec un nom and then savoir with a verb or then structure or verbal structure or let's say a sentence if you want. Okay, so first of course we should remember how to conjugate savoir at the present form here. Okay, je sais, tu sais, il sait, elle sait. Nous savons, vous savez, ils savent, elles savent. Okay, so if you look carefully here, you write it S-A-I-S, -S, well, the same way here. Here you write it S-A-I-T, okay, but then phonetically these three forms are the same, and it's C'est, okay. Je sais, tu sais, il sait, elle sait. All right, so let's see now the passé composé form. J'ai su, tu as su, il a su, elle a su, nous avons su, vous avez su, ils ont su. Okay, so if you remember, when we introduced this uh, passé composé form, it was in unit 5, if my memory is correct, uh, then you put first, in most of the cases, the verb avoir at the present form, and then you put this participe passé form, and the participe passé form for savoir is su, okay, so it doesn't change. That's the reason why you will put it right here after each form, okay? So, j'ai su, tu as su, il a su, elle a su, nous avons su, little liaison here, Vous avez su, same thing here, ils ont su, little liaison between the two, elles ont su, okay? And now, let's see, connaître at the present form. Je connais, tu connais, il connaît, elle connaît, nous connaissons, vous connaissez, ils connaissent, elles connaissent. All right. Same thing as we had for uh, savoir, if you look carefully. Here, connaît, A-I-S, connaît, A-I-S, and then connaît, A-I-T. So don't forget this circumflex, even if you don't pronounce it well, you should write it. Um, well, you pronounce these three forms the same way. Okay? Connaît, connaît, and then connaît. All right. Let's see how it goes for the passé composé form. J'ai connu. Tu as connu, il a connu, elle a connu, sorry, nous avons connu, vous avez connu, ils ont connu, elles ont connu. Okay, so same rule, first, avoir at the present form, then participe passé form of connaître, it's connu. All right, so it will go everywhere for each person here. Okay, j'ai connu, tu as connu, il a connu, elle a connu. Nous avons connu, vous avez connu, ils ont connu, elles ont connu. Okay? And now for the future form, uh, as it was introduce, introduced in the previous lesson, unit uh, 6. So, savoir the future form, and it goes like, je saurai, tu sauras, il saura, elle saura, nous saurons, vous saurez, ils sauront, elles sauront. And then for connaître at the future form. Je connaîtrai, 
tu connaîtras, il connaîtra, elle connaîtra, nous connaîtrons, vous connaîtrez, ils connaîtront, elles connaîtront. All right. So, let's see a few examples now. So the first one, remember, savoir, so you construct it with a verb or a sentence. Okay, in that case I just put a verb. Je sais chanter. Okay, so remember, savoir, to know, chanter, to sing. Je sais chanter. All right, so... Second verb here, chanter. Well, the rule in French is that if you've got a structure like that with two verbs, the second verb should be all the time at the infinitive. Okay? Je sais chanter like that. All right? If you put the same sentence at the passé composé, as we, we saw previously, the, the passé composé form of savoir, it goes like j'ai su chanter. All right? And then the future form, je saurais chanter. Okay, so it's quite easy. Hein? Je sais chanter, j'ai su chanter, je saurais chanter. That's it. Let's see, connaître now. Je connais cette personne. Okay, so connaître, to know, okay. <laughs> and then, cette personne, personne is person, and it's uh, feminine, so if you want to put this, this, you should put it at the feminine, so it's this person, cette personne. Je connais cette personne. Passé composé, j'ai connu cette personne. And then the future form, je connaîtrai cette personne. All right? So it's not that difficult, okay? But, of course, there is one exception. And the exception is savoir plus a noun. Okay? So you will use this structure only if you want to introduce this concept that we call in French par cœur, so by heart. Let's see one example. Je sais ma leçon. So in that case, savoir to know, ma leçon, my lesson. Okay, so in that sentence, when you use je sais ma leçon, you really want to say that you know your lesson by heart. Okay? That's the reason why we use savoir in that case. Okay? Same thing for the second example. Je sais mon texte, my text, or then my lines if you want. Je sais mon texte. Okay? So it's the same. You want to introduce this idea that you know your text or your lines by heart. Okay? And that's the only exception when we will use savoir plus a noun. All right? Le conditionnel présent. So basically the conditionnel is, as in English, this conditional form. So would, could, okay? But of course, as in English, we've got different tenses for that. And the first one that we will see, so the more classic tense that we we'll us usually use, sorry, when we talk about the conditionnel, it's the present form. Okay, so let's start now. Le conditionnel présent. So in this lesson, we'll see first la formation, so the way to build it, to make it, and then, of course, l'emploi, so when you should use this conditionnel présent form. Okay, so let's first start, if that's okay with you, with the formation, the way to make it. So you'll see that it's quite easy in a way. And normally that's the reason why we introduce it right after the future tense. So if you didn't see the video regarding the future tense, I definitely advise you to do it because uh, it will be more clear for you. So it's unit six. I don't remember the lesson, but check unit six, unit six, sorry, and then the future and you'll find it. Okay. Because the way we construct this conditionnel présent is the same way that we construct the future, okay? The only difference will be the endings, all right? So, let's take the first example that we've got here. Parler belongs to the first group of verbs. Remember, we've got three in French. And the first group of verb is ending with a air, like here, okay? So, these verbs are regular. 
So that's a good news, and normally that's the reason why we start with them. Uh, so you don't have to change your verb. So parler is like that. You will keep it like that. And based on this form, after that, you will add the endings. Okay? And for je, the ending will be a, e, s. Okay? So you don't need to modify your infinitive form, the basic form is like that, it goes there, and right after, you just add the ending R-E-S, and you get je parlerai. All right, so it's quite simple. Second group, so verbs ending with E-R, be careful, not all the verbs ending with E-R, but a quite decent amount of them <laughs> belongs to the second group, but then still, it will be quite easy because it is exactly the same way. You don't modify your infinitive form. You just keep it like that, all right? And after that, you add your ending. Je finirai. So, A, I, S. Je finirai. All right, so it's quite easy. You keep your basic form, your infinitive form, and right after, you just put the ending. Okay, for the third group of verbs, so of course we will have some exceptions, so we'll see that a bit later in this lesson, but still, the main rule is if it's ending like lire, lire to read, okay, uh, with this e, uh, well, the idea is that you will take this e uh away, as we quite usually do in French, okay, and after that you will add your ending. Je lirai. All right? So the rule goes like, if you've got final E, uh, then you take it away. You've got your form here, L-I-R, and then you add your ending, A-I-S, je lirai. Okay? So you've got three forms here, and they're actually the, well, conditional présent forms. Je parlerai, je finirai, je lirai. Okay. Parler is to talk or to speak, finir to finish or to end, lire to read. Okay, so the endings now. So we saw that previously that, well, the ending for je will be, whoops, sorry, the ending for je will be a, i, s. Okay, the ending for tu will be, well, the same, a, i, s. The ending for il, l will be, a, I, T. Okay? The good news is that even if we write them differently, like you see here, we pronounce them the same way. And it goes like E, E, E. All right? So, as usual in French, what you pronounce, well, it's not that difficult in a way, but then remember how to write them. A, I, S for je. A, I, S for tu, A, I, T for il, elle. So now let's see nous. And nous goes like I, O, N, S. Okay? And it should be pronounced ion. Remember, final S is not pronounced. Ion. Okay? Then for vous, it goes like I, E, Z. And it goes like I, Y. Okay? Remember when you've got this I before, it goes like I, Y, Y. Okay? Y. So that's the reason why we had this yon here and then ye. All right. And the last one. So even if it looks <laughs> scary because you've got three vowels here and then nt, okay? A, E, E, N, T. So as usual, that's the way you should write it. But then phonetically, the good news is that you pronounce it e. So the, the same way that we had here e, e here, e, and then e. Okay, so let's pronounce them. E, 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 Yon, Ye, E. So if you look carefully, you get only three phonetical pronunciation. The first one is here and here. It's the same. So it's E. After that, we get this Yon. And after that, after that we get this Ye. All right. So let's see now for... Parler, parler, it's to speak or to talk. Okay, so, je parlerai, tu parlerais, 
Il parlerait, elle parlerait. Nous parlerions, vous parleriez. Il parlerait, elle parlerait. Second example, choisir from the second group of verbs. Choisir is to choose. Je choisirais, tu choisirais, il choisirait, elle choisirait. Nous choisirions, vous choisiriez, il choisirait, elle choisirait. Ok, not that difficult. The last example, so for the third group, it's écrire, écrire is to write. Ok, so same rule, if you remember, the example was with lire to read, but then it's exactly the same rule, so if you look carefully, it's ending with the, this E, uh, ok, so you take it away, and after that you put the ending. J'écrirai, tu écrirais, il écrirait, elle écrirait, nous écririons, vous écririez, ils écriraient, elles écriraient. All right, so it's not that difficult anyway. But of course, we've got some exceptions, as I said in the beginning. So the, the, the idea for these exceptions is that the, the, the word, or sorry, the verb will change. So endings will be the same, so that's one good news. So all the endings that we saw previously, well, they will be the same, but then you get to remember the way the verb will change. So if you saw, that's the reason why I, I spoke about the future uh, lesson, if you saw the future lesson and you remember the way these verbs are changing for the future, the good news is that they will be changing the same way. So, être will become sœur. Alright? And then, after that, you will have to put the endings. Je serai. Alright? So, you will keep this sœur all the time for your conjugation. And after that, you will add all the endings that we saw. Okay? Avoir will become or. Same thing here. After that, you will add all the endings. So, tu aurais. Aller will become ir. And you'll get il irait, elle irait. Faire will become fer. Nous ferions. Savoir will become sort. Vous Sauriez. Voir will become ver. Il verrait, elle verrait. Ok, so let's see them one more time. So, être, to be, je serai. Avoir, to have, tu aurais. Aller, to go, il irait, elle irait. Faire, to do, nous ferions. Savoir, to know, vous sauriez. Voir, to see, il verrait, elle verrait. All right, so one more list of exceptions. Pouvoir will become pour. Je pourrais. Vouloir will become voudre. Tu voudrais. Pleuvoir will become pleuvre. Il Pleuvrait. Devoir will become d'oeuvre. Nous devrions. Venir will become viendre. Vous viendriez. Courir will become cours. Il courrait, elle courrait. All right, so let's see them one more time. Pouvoir can. Je pourrais. Vouloir to want. Tu voudrais. Pleuvoir, to rain. Il pleuvrait. Devoir, to have to. Nous devrions. Venir, to come. Vous viendriez. Courir, to run. Il courrait, elle courrait. All right. So, it was the first thing regarding the conditionnel présent. And then, as I said, regarding the, the, the fact that it's quite close to the future. So the important thing is to remember that 
The endings for the future are AI, AS, A, ONS, EZ, ONT. Okay, but then for the conditional present, if you remember them, it was AIS, AIS, AIT, IONS, IEZ, AIENT. So to be totally honest, if you think about that, because basically we construct these two tenses the same way, okay, so the endings here and here will be the only way to make the difference between the future and the conditional. So it's quite important to really remember them uh, by heart. Okay, so remember, future, a, i, a, s, a, o, n, s, e, z, o, n, t, but then conditionnel present, a, i, s, a, i, s, a, i, t, i, o, n, s, i, e, z, a, i, e, n, t. Okay? And now let's see when we should use this conditionnel present because that's the most important thing. The first situation would be to express a desire or a wish, exprimer un désir ou un souhait. Okay? J'aimerais être en vacances. Aimer, to like or to love. Okay? And here you get the conditional form. Être, to be, en vacances, on vacation, holidays. J'aimerais être en vacances. Second use will be if you want to donner un conseil, to give an advice. Vous devriez apprendre le français. Okay, devoir, to have to, but then in that case when you say vous devriez, you should. Uh, th that would be the more correct translation. Vous devriez apprendre, apprendre is to learn, le français, French. And then if you want to ask something politely, that's the tense you should definitely use. And especially if you go in a coffee restaurant or if you go in a shop and you, you want to ask some for something, then use this conditional form. I mean, trust me, it's quite important. Okay? Je voudrais un café, s'il vous plaît. Okay? Je voudrais un café, s'il vous plaît. Okay, so let's read them one more time. J'aimerais être en vacances. Vous devriez apprendre le français. Je voudrais un café, s'il vous plaît. Another use of this conditionnel présent is, is if you want to construct a sentence, like in English, for instance, with this if. Okay, so if in French is si. And then the rule is quite strict in French. If you start with this if, si, then it should be followed by the imparfait form. We didn't see this form yet. It will come in the next lesson or in the next unit, sorry. So no stress about that. It's just an example, but it's just, just for you to know that if you want to construct this if structure, then it should be followed by imparfait. Then comes le conditionnel. Okay, so let's take one example. Si j'avais le temps, je ferais du sport. Okay, so si j'avais le temps, so if I had, it's the same in English, huh? you, 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 put, uh, you put this, I had. Si j'avais le temps, so time, je ferais, remember it was faire, to do, but then at the conditional form, du sport. Okay? Another example. Si j'étais riche, so riche, rich, était, it's to be, remember, je voyagerais, voyager is to travel, autour du monde, around the world. Oops. <laughs> And then the last one. Si elle était là, So, être, to be, là, here. Nous irions, so remember, it was to go, aller, and it becomes ir, irions, nous promener. Okay, so, se promener, to have a walk. Question avec qui et 
Joker. So it's quite important. So please take the time to listen to me. <laughs> so let's start now. Les questions avec qui et que. So we'll first start with qui. And then after that we'll see que. All right. So the first thing, qui. And it's starting right now. Qui est-ce qui parle? So it's a question. Okay. Qui est-ce qui parle? Second example would be, qui est-ce que tu regardes? Okay, so the first one, qui est-ce qui parle? And then, qui est-ce que tu regardes? So, in both cases, uh, well, these questions are mostly for uh, oral use, because uh, when we add this s qui est-ce que, normally it's when you talk, okay? If you write, you don't really need to put them. Uh, we've got some more formal way to write questions. We saw that previously, okay? But still, it's possible orally to use these structures. So the question is, why do we use qui here and qui here, and then qui here and que here, okay? Because it can, it can look a bit messy at the beginning, especially if you don't really know how to use or to structure that. So the first thing that we've got to remember, yes, it's here. So the first part here, this key, well, we will use this key here just because we want to have the information and it concerns a person. Who, okay? Qui means who when we start it, when we start the question with it, okay? Qui est-ce qui parle? Qui est-ce que tu regardes? And then we've got the second part here, as we saw, and it's quite interesting because we've got two options here, the first one and the second one. So the first one, you will use qui just because you will ask the question regarding the subject of the verb. You get the verb here, parler, okay? And the information that you want to have concerns the subject of this verb. And then here, we will use que just because we want to have the information concerning the object of the verb. So you've got regarder here, but then if you look carefully, you already have the subject. It's tu regardes, okay? So, qui est-ce qui parle? So if you want to translate it directly, you could translate it like, who is talking? Okay? Qui est-ce qui parle? All right, so here, you want to have the information regarding the person, and then here, you want to have the information regarding the subject of the verb, parler. Okay? And here, qui est-ce que tu regardes? So, who are you watching? So, first thing here, because you want to have this information, the information regarding a person, qui est-ce que? And here, it will be the object of the verb. So, you are watching someone. Okay? So, Let's see a few examples. The first one, qui est-ce qui parle? And then the answer could be, ma femme parle. My wife talks or is talking. Okay? So in that case, you can see that in the answer, the answer that you give see here, it's ma femme parle. Okay? So it's the subject, ma femme parle. And then the second example we had, it's, qui est-ce que tu regardes? Okay. Je regarde mon ami. Okay, mon ami, my friend. Regardez, was to, to watch or to look. Okay, je regarde mon ami. And you can see here that it's, well, basically it's quite clear. It's quite clear. So, qui, just because you want the information for a person. And then the second key, just because it will be the subject. Ma femme parle. Okay, here, qui, because it's the person. Mon ami, my friend, it's a person. And then que, just because if you look carefully, it comes after your verb, because it's not the subject, it's the object. Okay? Grammatical object, we're not talking about an object, but a grammatical object, so it can be a person, it could be a dog, animal, or an object if you want. Okay? So, je regarde mon ami. All right? Now, let's see que. First question, qu'est-ce qui fait ce bruit? Okay, second question, qu'est-ce que tu fais? All right, so remember that even if you don't have the que 
here, but you've got this QU, all right? It does mean that previously we had the E uh, here and here, but then as usual, if you look carefully, we've got here another E uh, starting here. So we've got to take our E uh away, okay? So let's see now. First part, we use this K because we want to have to have the information regarding a thing, okay? So we had key previously and it was for a person and then K it's for a thing. So it's not for a person, so K will be for a thing when you start your, the, the question with it, okay? And then here, so remember we've got this key here and then we've got this K here. Well, it will be exactly the same idea that we had previously. So you will use key here just because you want the information regarding the subject of the verb. You've got the verb here to do. Okay. And then here you put this K just because you want to have the answer with the object of the verb. Okay. You've got the verb here, faire, to do, same verb. But then you've got the subject, tu fais, you do. Okay, so the first question, qu'est-ce qui fait ce bruit? What is doing this noise? Qu'est-ce qui fait ce bruit? Or this sound, if you want. Qu'est-ce que tu fais? What are you doing? Okay, so let's see now the same question. Qu'est-ce qui fait ce bruit? And the answer would be, la voiture de mon père fait ce bruit. Okay, my father's car, okay, la voiture de mon père. So if you translate it directly, it's the car of my father. And then you've got the verb, okay, but then this long thing is the subject. La voiture de mon père fait ce bruit. Okay, so that's the reason why first we had this que, because in, it's a thing, it's not a person, okay? And then qui here, because it's the subject of the verb faire. Okay? Second question, qu'est-ce que tu fais? So if you remember carefully, it was, what are you doing? Qu'est-ce que tu fais? And the answer, je prépare un chocolat chaud. Okay, so I wanted to put another verb in the, the, the answer just to... To, 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 well, show you that is you don't really need to answer with the same, same verb, you know. Qu'est-ce que tu fais? What are you doing? Je prépare. So, I prepare. Je prépare. And then, this is the object of the verb. So, the object, just let me repeat, uh, the gr grammatical object of the verb. So, je prépare un chocolat chaud. All right? So, now, remember that we can, of course, construct these things with preposition, okay? Just because in French we've got uh, verbs and uh, verbs are in some cases uh, constructed with preposition, so you will need to remember these things. So preposition can be a, avec, de, pour, and then chez, okay? A qui est-ce que tu parles? Okay, remember, so parler, to talk, is constructed with a, to talk to, okay, parler à quelqu'un. So if you want to know à qui est-ce que tu parles, who are you talking to, okay, à qui est-ce que tu parles. So it doesn't change, you just need to first start with the preposition and then you continue your structure, okay. Uh, jouer, jouer, it's to play, okay. And then normally, if you're talking about a sport or activity, so sport or activity, then we tend to use this preposition a with it. Okay, so play, but then a, and then the name of the activity. It could be football, or it could be basketball, or it could be whatever. Okay, a quoi est-ce que tu joues? And then now, I assume that you will tell me, oh, oh have a look at that. What on earth is going on? Why do we have this quoi and not que? Okay, well, because that's the rule, and we'll see that, but that's the rule in French. If you want to construct a question like here, 
with k. But then it is constructed with a preposition, then k will change and then it will become qua. Okay, that's the reason why. Key doesn't change, k will be transformed into qua. So that's the reason why here we've got a quoi est-ce que tu joues? Okay? Now, avec qui est-ce que tu viens? So, venir is coming avec with, okay? Avec qui est-ce que tu viens? Avec quoi est-ce que tu écris? Écrire is to write, okay? Same thing, with, okay? And then it's exactly the same rule, remember, I told you that, que becomes quoi here, that's it. Avec quoi est-ce que tu écris? Okay? So remember, preposition with qui, no problem at all. But then, preposition plus que, non. <laughs> you will have to use quoi. Okay? So remember, that's quite important because it, it, it can sound a bit strange if, uh, if you're using this que instead of quoi with the preposition. Les nombres ordinaux. Les nombres ordinaux, premier, première, okay? So you've got here the English version, so first, okay? But then as usually in French, we've got the difference between the masculine form and the feminine form, okay? So I will write here first, masculine, then feminine, and I will read both, okay? So premier, première, deuxième, Second, second. Okay, so it's quite interesting because here you've got deuxième and then it doesn't change. It's uh, the masculine or the feminine form is exactly the same. So that's a good news. And then we've got here another option, second or seconde. Okay, in that case, it does mean that nothing is coming after. Okay, so deuxième usually means that you've got after that third, fourth, etc. Okay, but then second, normally, it's the end. Okay, it's the second one. Okay. Troisième. Okay, masculine form, feminine form, the same. Quatrième. Cinquième. Sixième. Okay, one more time. Premier, première. Deuxième. Second, seconde, troisième, quatrième, cinquième, sixième, septième, huitième, neuvième, dixième, onzième, douzième. So, so far, I assume that it's not that difficult. You've got to remember that it's M, okay. Septième, huitième, neuvième, dixième, onzième, douzième. Treizième, quatorzième, quinzième, seizième, dix-septième, dix-huitième. Okay. Treizième, quatorzième, quinzième, 16e, 17e, 18e, 19e, 20e, 21e, 100e, 1000e, 1001e, 1000e, 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 Centième, millième, mille et unième.